but I don't think this will go down too well. Let's begin. Labour's plan to ban North Sea oil and gas development criticised as damaging to UK economy and energy security. A Labour government apparently would continue to use the existing wells but block any requests for new licences. But the move would guarantee higher energy prices and deter investment in the UK, according to the Institute of Economic Affairs. Andy Mayer, energy analysis at the think tank, said last year the opposition wanted to super tax the North Sea to reduce the cost of living. This year they want to destroy it, guaranteeing higher prices despite net zero plans we will need fossil fuels for the next 20 to 30 years. And with the global energy market increasingly plagued by uncertainty, politicians' hostility towards using the resources beneath our own waters is all the more perplexing. A smart transition would be to use our natural wealth and fund research and development into better and cheaper solutions. But this is the opposite of seeking higher prices to force change. And the mere signal sent by this proposal will deter investment which has already been damaged by the government taxes and regulations. And with this policy, Keir Starmer might as well, you know, just jump in an Aberdeen taxi and hand out the doll notices. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak supports new oil and gas exploration and energy licences to come under the government's control, rather than Hollywood's under Keir Starmer plans. And Labour would only borrow to invest in green enterprises. But critics claim it would lead to a greater reliance on energy suppliers from other countries. A Labour source said, We are against the granting of new licences for oil and gas in the North Sea. They will do nothing to cut bills, as the Tories have acknowledged. They undermined our energy security and would drive a coach and horse through our climate targets. But Labour would continue to use the existing oil and gas wells over the coming decades and manage them sustainably as we transform the UK into a cleaner energy superpower. Now, of course, I am certainly no energy expert. However, I don't think you really need to be to know that if you're getting something under our own waters, that is surely going to be cheaper than importing it from abroad and also would protect many people's jobs in the sector, wouldn't it? Which, if you get away with all that, is unfortunately going to cause costs to increase both with energy, gas... No doubt petrol and diesel as well, because they all use oil, don't they? I mean, the list just goes on. It's just another one of Labour's crazy policy to satisfy the woke eco-mob, isn't it? I mean, how long is it actually going to be before they employ someone from Just Stop Oil as their spokesperson? It's just ridiculous, isn't it? Maybe, who knows, they probably think that with energy prices so high at the moment, they think they can somehow disguise the fact that they'll artificially be keeping them higher. Rather than, of course, just letting them fall back slowly to near to where they were originally. Once, of course, the bell end overseas stops invading places, that is. But let's face it, at the end of the day, no matter what Labour do, their MPs aren't probably going to notice any major cost differences compared to what us poor more people will know us because they have a lovely 80 odd thousand pound salary to cushion the blow don't they so personally i think if anything they really need to remove their heads from their bums and stop talking so much crap but then again there's a teeny weeny chance that i could be wrong the worrying thing is though that with the way our unelected prime minister rishi sunak is running the party the labor government unfortunately looks quite certain at the next general election so who knows what policies woke eco mad or whatever else is going to be able to sneak through and they think they'll then be able to carry out with our blessing which i hope is the case. The article says that Mars bars are getting a new look as they trial a more environmentally friendly paper wrapping instead of a plastic one. The maker of the chocolate said the new wrapper available in Tesco stores was part of its exploration for a more sustainable future. Mars said it aimed to make all of its packaging recyclable, reusable or compostable. Richard Shuttleland Moore, packaging expert at Mars Wrigley UK, said the firm was exploring different wrapping ideas for all of its confectionery. For the Mars bar, he said the challenge was providing adequate protection whilst guaranteeing the food safety, quality and integrity of the product to prevent food waste. The company said it was investing hundreds of millions of pounds into its goal of recycling plastic used by a third. Adam Grant, general manager at Mars Wrigley UK, said the trial of the Mars wrapper was a big step to see how paper-based packaging works in everyday life. Mars recently achieved carbon neutrality. Hooray! for the first time, which is said came through carbon credits and emission reductions. Tesco, though, said it was delighted to partner with Mars for the new wrapper. And the supermarket's packaging development manager, Andrew Flood, said the trial aligned with its own strategy of removing plastic and packaging in our business where we can, reducing it where we can't, and reusing more and recycling what's left. 
Now, of course, I don't know about you, but in my lifetime, I've consumed many Mars bars. And each one was obviously lovely, but I think quite a lot of that has to do with the plastic wrapping because plastic stops air from getting to the product, doesn't it? Which, to be honest, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think paper would actually do that. At least, if anything, not as well as plastic does. You've also got to remember that paper can actually rip quite easily, can't it? So, if anything, something kept in plastic is going to keep more fresher for longer than something wrapped up in paper. I mean, I haven't had one of these new paper packet Mars bars myself yet, but... I'm guessing they'll probably come across as a dodgy knockoff of the original thing, but strangely made by the proper company. Take McDonald's for example, they recently took away their plastic spoons for McFlurry ice creams, and now we have to shove a cardboard paper one in our mouth, which, to be honest, probably if anything, if you take your time eating your ice cream, isn't going to look too good by the end of it, and maybe actually add some flavouring to your ice cream as well. Of course, I don't know about you, but I'm getting totally fed up with all this eco-crap. It makes you wonder what's next, doesn't it? Maybe who knows those start telling us we're too fat again, because let's face it, they do that enough as it is, don't they? And start releasing bite-sized bars as a standard. Rather than in the good old days where you used to have the standard size, the king size, and then with Snickers, if you were really hungry, you used to get something called a hunger buster, which was about that big. Well, it was for me when I was a child, anyway. And it only cost about 50p, which back then was probably equivalent to a pound or pound 20 today. At the end of the day, though, this is more than likely going to annoy their customers, especially if they do get a bit of a manky one because let's face it this new eco packaging isn't exactly going to be able to keep the air out as well as plastic is it so if anything tesco's i think to be honest your trial will probably end up being shorter than someone like warwick davis high street banks are facing demands to offer higher interest rates for their loyal savers industry regulators should make the high street giants improve meager and unjustifiably low interest payments say experts some banks are accused of ripping off savers by hundreds of pounds a year as customers are reluctant to leave big name business in order to seek better rates at lesser known challenger brands. Observers point out that historically low interest rates have been rising but banks have in turn failed to give customers high returns for their nest eggs. A which survey reveals that a saver with £10,000 to invest can be left up to £312 a year worse off if they stick with traditional brands. Some rates were even as low as 0.1%. Angry ex-pensions minister Sir Steve Webb called for effective and enforced action by regulators to force banks to improve their offer to savers. He added that the high street businesses are just taking advantage of people. A spokesman for which said of the low returns on savings, such measly rates are unjustifiable, particularly at a time when borrowers are being hit with higher repayments and the Bank of England rate is now 4.5%. Our advice is simple. If you're not satisfied with your rates that you're currently receiving, now is the time to switch. So Steve said that savers have had their savings ravaged by inflation in the last couple of years. A lot of people have a little nest egg, maybe cash or in an ISA. They know that they can get away with this. The losers are not the well-advised, the well-informed and the well-off. It's ordinary savers who have put a bit of money to one side. They've been hit hard by inflation and now don't even get an upside when interest rates are going up. He added that the Financial Conduct Authority and the Treasury were the regulators' best place to compel the banks to change. Many of the bank's most loyal customers are older people who are less likely to switch brands in pursuit of better returns. Well, nowadays, everyone has to do their research with everything, it seems. No longer can we just trust one bank bank or branch or whatever to give us the best rates anymore. But of course they know, don't we, that quite often people do not switch because, let's face it, it's a little bit of a hassle and it obviously means giving up your account number, which quite a lot of people remember and don't really like the thought of changing, even if it means they might get a couple extra quid a month. What would be quite good though is if there was a bit more help and advice out there from the banks themselves. Or maybe he knows new rules put in place to make sure that if the base rate rises by so much, then certain accounts also have to rise by that as well. Or something like that. Yeah, I'm not a financial expert. Also, I know a lot of people are put off by the little firms. However, if they are FCA protected, then apparently that protects your money for up to £85,000. Even though, admittedly, I myself would prefer to use a well-trusted name, which has a physical presence on the high street, they can just go in if there are any problems. However, places like that might soon become a thing of the past, especially with the way they close in a lot of banks at the moment. So who knows in the future, maybe 10, 20 or even 30 years' time, Halifax, Lloyds, TSB and all other banks might themselves just exist on the internet. Although, to stop that happening, I myself think it would be quite a good idea if the banks could all just share one building. You just go up to the cashier and they'd ask you what bank you bank with, select it on their system and do whatever you want to do. Which hopefully would mean that even though banks are slowly disappearing, it would at least mean you could access them on every high street. Maybe who knows they could even handle letters and parcels. But we'd need a name for it, wouldn't we? Some sort of office. 
Um, how about the banking post office or something like that? But I guess we'll just have to wait and see what will happen, won't we? Anyway, if all goes well, I should be back tonight. So make sure you click that subscribe button down there so you don't miss my next video. I'll see you in the next one.